Hi everybody. In this video we're going to learn how to use drag controls to snap an object on a grid. So in this example the cube will always have the same Y position on the grid and you cannot drag the object off of the grid. And you can see that I can just move a little bit and it will snap to the next cell in the grid. So let's see how we can use drag controls to do this. I have drag controls in my modules folder and in my script tag I am importing drag controls from the path in my code editor directory. After I have made a basic scene I am making a new 3 grid helper. The grid helper has four arguments. The first is the size so it's 50 units wide by 50 units long. The second argument is the number of divisions so it's 10 so that means it's 10 cells wide by 10 cells long so each cell is 5 units wide by five units long. The third argument is the center line color. So I have black lines running down the middle of both axes. And the fourth argument is the color lines of the rest of the grid. So I have white lines for the rest of the grid. And I'm just adding it to the scene. Then I'm just making a ground to go underneath the grid. And I'm making a cube so we can drag and drop it on this grid. And now I'm creating my drag controls. So I'm creating a new instance of the drag controls. I'm passing in an array of draggable objects. It just contains that cube. It's a three group and my camera and render. And I'm adding four event listeners, drag start, drag end, hover on and hover off. So all this is normal. I haven't changed anything to handle the grid. We're actually gonna do that in the drag controls JS file. So if we click it and open it up, we'll scroll down to the on pointer move function. You're just plugging in the cell size of your grid, setting the Y position of the cube on that grid, and telling the drag controls how big your grid is. So this line of text is normal, it's just getting that position. And now we're going to add some code below that. So we have to tell the drag controls how we're configuring our grid. So our grid size is 50 by 50, and each cell in that grid is 5 by 5. So here I'm taking the selected position that is calculated up here and I'm dividing it by 5. And then I'm using this floor function and it's going to return the largest integer that is less than or equal to a given number. So for example if the x position is 3.5 and we divide it by 5 that's going to be 0.7. And if we use this floor method it's going to round it down to the nearest integer which is 0. And then we're going to multiply it by the scalar, which is the size of each cell in the grid. So we're going to multiply it by 5. So 0 times 5 is still 0. And then we're adding this scalar, which is half the size of each cell in the grid, which is 2.5 units. So 0 plus 2.5 is 2.5. And that's where that cube will be placed. Remember, the position of the cube is the middle of the cube. So if the cube is 5 units wide, by 5 units long, by 5 units high, the middle point is 2.5. So we want to put the middle of the cube to the middle of each cell in the grid. So you can use this for any size of grid. Put in what your cell width is, put in what your cell width is, and then put in half your cell width, and it will work it out. Now I want to keep my cube along the ground. So I'm keeping the Y position of this cube at 2.5. So this value should be half the size of, of your cube. And now we need to keep the cube on the grid. So my grid size is 50 by 50. So the origin will be in the middle. That means the left hand side will be minus 25 and the right hand side will be plus 25. And on the Z axis it'll be the same. Remember the position of the cube is the midpoint of the cube. So I have to take 2.5 off the left and right sides and the front and back sides. So I'm just checking if the X position is less than minus 22.5 or greater than 22.5. And if it is, I'm setting it to minus 22.5 or 22.5 on the X and Z axes. And that's all there is to it.